On this episode of OBD for Everyone, we're going to be using these inexpensive Bluetooth scanners, an app called Torque Pro to connect, add some gauges, and make it talk faster. <laughs> The first step is to connect our Bluetooth OBD scanner to the car's diagnostic port. Normally, they're on the driver's side, on the bottom of the dash. In our case here, I've got it plugged in. The next step is to start the car so we can stream some live data. Now, this Bluetooth OBD scanner has not been used before, so we need to pair to it. To do that, we will go to settings, and under Bluetooth, we will look. And here we can see we have a device called OBD2. This is the Bluetooth name of the Bluetooth OBD2 scanner. So we simply touch it. And now we need to pair with it. Each Bluetooth OBD scanner will have its own pin. My pin is one, two, three, four, and I'll touch OK. And now we can see we are paired. Now go back to home. Now that we have paired with the Bluetooth OBD scanner, we can now start the Torque Pro app. We have four icons on the top left. The first one is GPS position. When this is flashing, it's telling us it has not got a GPS lock, so it does not know exactly where we are. The next icon kind of looks like a small tablet, and that tells us it has the resources it requires to function properly. After that, we have another icon that actually looks a little bit like a OBD scanner, and that tells us that the app is able to communicate with the OBD scanner. Now, the last icon on the right, it's a picture of a vehicle. And when it's not flashing, it tells us the app is able to communicate with the ECU through our OBD scanner. We know we are streaming live data because if you look at the gauge right in the middle there, it says the Rev 650. And if I happen to accelerate a bit, we can see that changes. So we are now looking at live engine data. However, we can see flashing red text. It says profile not set up. We have not set up a vehicle profile. So let's do that. We will touch on the gear and go to vehicle profile. We'll give this a name. In my case here, I'll give a name of G37. Engine displacement is 3.7. Total vehicle weight, including driver, that is 1,780 kilograms. And maximum dial RPM. What this really means is where does it start to create a red line on any tack that the app creates. So the maximum engine RPM on my car is 7,500. I'm not gonna worry about the other items here. I'm just gonna hit save. And now we have a vehicle profile called G37. If we now go to real-time information, we are now looking at one of the default dashboards that Torque provides. So here we have our revs, vehicle speed, coolant temperature, acceleration, throttle position, and intake manifold vacuum. If I rev the engine a bit, we can see things changing. Awesome. Now let's say we want to delete a gauge to add something that's of more interest to us. So to delete a gauge, we simply push and hold our finger and say delete display. We will push and hold our finger again and say add display. We, now in this case here, I want to add a half dial meter. And what I want to add is one of these items. Now, you may notice some items are a bright green, some are a dark green, and some are black. The items that are black are not supported by your specific vehicle. The items that are a bright green, it's live data. And if you look at the blue text, you can see the live data. Now, most of the time, the live data is coming from the ECU. However, in the example of acceleration, whether for total x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, that's actually coming from the tablet. So it's not coming from the ECU. Anyways, all right, and we'll scroll down here until I get to air fuel ratio measured. And I'm gonna make this large. When you add a display or a gauge, 
it gets added to the metal. If you push and hold your finger, we can now drag it off to the edge. So here we can see the so engine cooled it at 92, 93 degrees Celsius. The air fuel ratio is about 14.6, 14.7, and that's exactly where it should be. It's referred to as stoichiometric. Let's say we want to delete this gauge here and we want to add another one. And this time, we're going to add a graph. And we are going to graph our accelerator pedal position, and we'll make that large. And we'll just touch and hold and bring that to the top here. You can see our accelerator pedal position is at zero. Now, watch when I give it a little bit of gas. We can see we are getting live data. And let's see if we can make it talk faster. We will touch the back button and let's go to adapter status on the right hand side here. If we scroll down, we can see we're currently getting about an average of 18 reads per second. We are able to read about 18 sensors per second. That's pretty good. To make this faster, all we need to do is turn on faster communication. If you look directly above, we can see it says faster communication is set to no. So let's set that to yes. We need to hit back and go to settings and settings. And under OBD2 adapter settings, we can see right here, it says faster communication. We'll turn that on. Now notice it says we need to quit and restart. So we will hit back and back and okay and restart it. And we can see the vehicle is flashing, so it's not quite connected to the ECU. And now it is connected, perfect. So let's go back to adapter status and scroll down here a little bit. And look, our current read speed is now an average of 28, 29, 30. Because we've just restarted the app, the average is still going up. Why is this important? When you are data logging, you wanna be able to read the different ECU parameters as fast as possible. Because that will allow you to get data quicker, as well as if you have more data to collect, each sensor gets sampled a bit faster. So it just makes your gauges more responsive and it makes it quicker to sample data from the ECU. And as we can see here, our average is now 36 and it looks like it's slowly going up. So that's great. So let's go back and we'll go back to real-time information. And let's just make sure everything's all working here. That's all good, it is. If we wanna reset this back to where it was, we touch the gear and under layout, we can now say reset dials to default layout and touch yes. And now we are, we're back at the very beginning. Thank <laughs> you.